All right, in this color, it's kind of hard to miss, but this is the 2022 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. And standing right next to it is Brandon Vivian, Executive Chief Engineer at Cadillac. Brandon, let's just get right to it. 668 horsepower, holy goodness. 668 horsepower. How, how, why, and thank you. <laughs> So the first why is this is the ultimate expression of Cadillac performance, technology, and craftsmanship. And we want to make sure that we're winning in 668 horsepower, 659 pound-feet of torque do that for us. The how is a, a massaged LT4 6.2 liter supercharged engine with a new, more efficient 1.7 liter supercharger, uh, less induction and exhaust restriction, and new engine control system, all of which provide extremely uh, responsive torque. Everything this car, it does very urgently. Now, LT4, that engine is something that lives in the Corvette as well, correct? It did live in the Corvette, that's that's correct. This, this engine is specifically designed for this application for the CT5V Blackwing. It does share uh, some common components. The, the long block is essentially the same, but the accessory drive, the supercharger, the induction system, the exhaust system, and engine control system is all unique. Got it. Now, that's cool. That's amazing. But that is actually not the most exciting part. The most exciting part is, just like the CT4V Blackwing, you choose between a 10-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual transmission. Oh my God, look at that. We still have manuals in these Cadillacs. This is a big car. This is a BMW 5 Series Mercedes E-Class size car, and we still get a manual transmission. How'd you pull that off? Well, first, we are super passionate about driving, and this car has to come with a manual transmission to really elevate and get to that level of, of driver engagement that we're really looking for. These will be our last gasoline-powered performance sedans, and for us, this meant having to be, had to have a manual. We're drivers, we love driving, and that's why it's a manual. And now, a manual is standard. Yeah, and that that's incredible to hear. Now you say last gasoline-powered performance vehicles. I'm assuming that means gasoline only, that uh, in the future there'll be electrified versions of things coming. So for Cadillac, we're going all electric. Um, and so these are the last gas-powered performance sedans. You know, everything that you'll see from, from us in the future will be electric powered. So we're not hybrids, not plug-ins. We're, this is, it's straight EV after this. That's what our philosophy is, yes. What is a very bold philosophy. Coming from an engineering objective point of view, there are a lot of advantages of electric motors in terms of response, torque, and those types of things. But it is a scary prospect. So. I'm certainly thankful that we've got one heck of a last hurrah from Cadillac with a 6.2 liter V8. It's not just powertrain, it's also the drivetrain, just like the CT4V Blackwing as well. This is rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive. And you've got 305 section with Michelin 19 inch wheels back there, but yeah, that's not gonna be enough to tame 668 horsepower. Why did you guys stick with rear-wheel drive and not all-wheel drive, which is becoming so popular in this size car? We're very focused on performance on the track and how the car, more importantly, drives on the track. It needs to be very approachable. It needs to be very linear in its responses. While all-wheel drive does provide some benefits in certain situations, it doesn't make the vehicle faster on a racetrack. And the other thing, the kinematics, especially the front suspension, would have had to change pretty considerably when you think about managing 659 pound-feet of torque, and then that would not provide the driving experience and that very connected feel that we have engineered into this vehicle. All right, well, we've talked a fair bit about going. We should mention stopping. We've got massive brakes here, six piston calipers, and are those carbon ceramic brakes? That is carbon ceramic brakes on a 15 and 3 quarter inch diameter rotor or 400 millimeters. And so it's an optional brake package that uh, removes 53 pounds of rotating mass off the vehicle. And that's unsprung weight we're talking about. It's unsprung and rotating both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is uh, the worst mass to have. Yes. And that's, we have 53 fewer pounds of it. And then in back, so these are also 
These are four piston calipers and we should mention these are also cross drilled and vented rotors and uh, not quite as big but still pretty big back here as well. Yep and you also notice the spot caliper for uh, park brake and we did that by uh, reducing again unsprung mass. We used to have a drum and hat set up. Uh, we went to this spot caliper, it reduces mass and uh, results in quicker acceleration. Great, great. Now, um, I'm seeing a fair bit of car carbon fiber here. Um, there's some carbon fiber up front, but we're back here. Let's talk about this rear wing. Sure. So first, uh, with all of our carbon, our carbon is book matched on center line, and you'll see that throughout the car. It flows from the center line out all the way down the car, including the rockers. This particular piece here, as you mentioned, is a highly engineered uh, aerodynamic device including a uh, gurney flap here on the on the very back and it balances the aerodynamic pressure as you increase uh, speed so that the center of pressure of the car is not moving and provides again a very stable very predictable handling great and let's go ahead and look at the pieces up front now so you're saying this is not this is not just for looks this this front lip here this front spoiler lip that i see down here that extends from the the base of the front fascia a good three inches this is functional this is doing something yep this is uh, uh, catching air um, and and pushing down on on the front of the car in fact we have uh, a requirement of being able to stand on this um, with 200 pounds of force wow uh, this is generating downforce um, we have these uh, flaps here that are directing air out and around the tire again reducing downforce and then what you can't see is our underwing yeah. and our strakes our underwing and our strakes and the whole underbody uh, philosophy of this car is taken directly from our DPIV uh, .R race cars. And that philosophy, the same in aerodynamic engineers, the same tools, the same wind tunnels, uh, we're all designed developing our race car we've put on, on this vehicle. A couple other really unique elements that you see here is in our grill. Uh, the new V-Series grill. Uh, these elements back here, the secondary reeds. Yeah, I see um, the ridges in here. Yes, yeah. they actually help airflow as it comes across, accelerate the air, and we get uh, additional cooling because of these. Oh, very fascinating. So does this make real downforce at the end or is this just uh, counteracting lift? So this car is counteracting lift. It's basically very near net zero, okay. but still has slight lift to it. But this vehicle, because it builds speed so fast and the requirements of this car, over 200 miles an hour you know, for, for this vehicle, uh, we're, we're developing a solution here that still gives us great track performance, but also gives us the ultimate uh, top speed too. Great, all right, well, we got to take a look inside because you need to be comfortable in a car when you're going 200 miles an hour. That's very important. And we have, again, deep bolsters both up here and down here. And I see a lot of dials and buttons and switches right on this thickly bolstered uh, synthetic suede uh, steering wheel. Dial, button, what are those? So this uh, button here is how you switch modes on our performance traction management system which is a very sophisticated control system that uses the traction control the stability control system the abs brakes the electronic limited slip differential the mr dampers that's magnetic rheological dampers the engine control system those are i'm sorry to interrupt those are adjustable those mr dampers they they adapt they're adaptive, but they're also adjustable. That's correct. And uh, with the engine and transmission controls, it's a very sophisticated system that enables you to drive uh, very confidently, very fast. And you're able to do that by the vehicle being predictive on, uh, on how it controls uh, coming out of a corner and even into a corner. Uh, but it, it, it uses the, the first and foremost, the engine controls and not brake controls to control the power. So you're able to put power down in a very confident manner. This has 659 pound feet of torque and the power is delivered instantaneously, but very seamlessly in a way that's very approachable because of this system. Now, uh, you, you tell me we get different modes here. Can you show me what those modes are? Yeah, sure. So this is performance traction, traction management. management. Yep, and so what you see is we're able to scroll through a number of different configurations and they change the slip and yaw targets of, of this system. And so each one of these is specifically designed uh, to enhance your experience. If you're on a wet track, whether you're autocrossing or at a track day, you can turn it to wet and of course you have dry. Each one of these, 
uh, allow more slip and more yaw in a manner that isn't hindering performance and it's enhancing performance. And when you say it's not hindering performance, it's it's using the traction control and the stability control system, but it's not using the brakes when it, it's doing that. It tries not to use the it brakes. Tries not yes. to. It only does it if it has if to. It, if you have to use the brakes, it will, but primarily it's about controlling the vehicle in a way that you still maintain momentum versus retarding performance and it's just a different philosophy it's very specific use is on track situation so either at an autocross or uh, a racetrack or even a drag strip okay and now, now this ptm we'll just call it we'll use the shorthand for it yep. that's separate from drive mode you still have drive modes here yep and so our drive modes as you'll watch as we toggle through we have a snow and ice mode we have a track mode we have a sport mode we have a tour mode. And, and it defaults to touring, right? It defaults to touring, then we have a my mode. And track mode doesn't necessarily mean the most aggressive mode. When you're in track mode, for example, the throttle is actually extremely linear, especially at the uh, top end of the range. So when you want to put the power down very delicately, especially with you know, how much uh, power the CT5V Blackwing makes, you're able to do that in a very controlled manner. And so uh, what it means is we've specifically tuned that mode for track usage. And finally, what's this uh, V mode right here? Yep. So V mode is a mode uh, that, again, it'll come up here and you can hit it and change and, again, configure all of the same settings. So it's kind of like my mode. It's kind of like my mode, but V mode does not latch. Uh, and But it's it's enabled you to, to get the car in a configuration as you come up. Let's say you're on an on-ramp or let's say you come up on a really nice section of road and you want to very quickly change it. You want to reach down and change the modes and change the settings. You just hit this button and the car immediately changes to that setting. You enjoy that section of road and you hit it again and the car goes back. Everything you're saying is just getting me super excited to go out and try this car myself. So I'm going to go do that. Brandon, thank you so much for giving us some insights on this CT5V Blackwing. I am about to drive a Cadillac CT5V Blackwing with lots and lots of horsepower on a racetrack it's pit race it's gonna be good i hope it should be good let's see how it goes probably not going to talk much until i get to cooling down now remember this car needs you need to be more patient with this front end it's heavier that sound what a glorious v8 sound coming out of this thing oh so good all right patient on the throttle here for sure you are currently in ptm sport but ptm sport will definitely let the rear end wiggle it's right here let it track out
First couple of laps of the CT5V Blackwing on my own. I love that sound. What a glorious, racy, amazing V8 engine in this thing. The engine note alone is worth the price of entry here. This thing screams, bellows, and just hustles you through so quick. I mean, I was reaching 130 plus in a couple different areas on these tracks, and there's not many like pure straightaway straights here. So good, good power. Now, the front end is for a car this size, the front end is pretty darn sharp. You get good play and all those types of things. So it's certainly a workable track capable front end, but compared to the CT4 for the Blackwing, it's uh, not as sharp as that. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but uh, one thing about this car, we still have rear wheel drive here. There's not an all wheel drive system to A, slow this thing down, or B, have to worry about putting it in a drift mode or a two wheel drive or anything like that. The only drive mode is two wheel drive mode in this thing. And it is absolutely glorious. So this thing, this thing's a player and it's just glorious, glorious fun. What a hoot. I, I absolutely really love my time here. Oh 
my gosh, all right. CT5B Blackwing, that, that is a strong cup of coffee right there. Oh man, really, really good, really enjoyable. I mean, you've got a lot of wheelbase to work with and you have to be more patient with the front end. You know, the corners, tighter corners feel extra tight, all those things, but man, boy that power and the fact that you can really rotate the car chassis balance if you're a heavy trail breaker like me it's really good i can really get the front end i can really get the back end to wiggle on corner entry and uh man wow yeah yeah cadillac uh made some playful machines here no doubt no doubt no Whew.